by reference to the definition of gravitational potential, explain why gravitational potential is a negative quantity. Okay, so let's first go over the definition of gravitational potential. It's the work done per unit mass in moving an object from infinitely far away to a point in the field. So just to quickly clarify that, let's say we have the Earth over here, we have a point that is very far away, so effectively infinitely far away, the gravitational field strength here is pretty much zero. We move a mass from there to a point in the field which has a finite distance from the Earth. Whatever the work done in moving that mass from this point to this point, we divide that by the mass of the object that we move between these two points, and that will be the gravitational potential. I'll also describe gravitational potential energy because the definition is pretty much the same. Gravitational potential energy is the same thing, but instead of work done per unit mass, it's just work done. So potential energy is the work done in moving a mass from infinitely far away to a point in the field. Okay, so the gravitational potential and potential energy are both defined to be zero infinitely far away. That's important because so let's first think about dropping a mass on the surface of the Earth. If we drop a mass, what happens is we lose GPE and we gain kinetic energy. And the reason for that is because the gravitational force is attractive. That causes the GPE to decrease and us to gain kinetic energy as a result. Similarly, if you have a mass that is very far away from the surface of the Earth and you let it fall towards Earth, the same thing occurs. Gravitational potential energy will decrease and therefore kinetic energy will increase. If GPE decreases, if gravitational potential energy decreases, gravitational potential will also decrease because they're, they're the same thing pretty much, it's just gravitational potential is divided by mass. But that won't affect the fact that as you drop a mass towards the surface of the Earth, both gravitational potential and potential energy will decrease. So going back to what I said earlier, potential and potential energy are defined to be zero infinitely far away. So if this attractive gravitational force causes work done that decreases gravitational potential energy and therefore gravitational potential, and it's zero to begin with, infinitely far away, now it's decreasing as this mass gets towards the Earth, that will then mean that for finite distances, gravitational potential and potential energy are negative. So let's summarize that. So gravitational potential is zero, infinitely far away. This is by definition. The attractive gravitational force does work done on the mass. That causes the gravitational potential energy and therefore gravitational potential to decrease. And decreasing from zero means the gravitational potential is negative for finite distances. Part B. Two stars, A and B, have their surfaces separated by a distance of 1.4 times 10 to the 12, as shown in this diagram. We have a point P. Point P, it says, lies on the line joining the centers of the two stars. The distance x of point P from the surface of the star may be varied. So basically, we're moving point P along this line here, which is between the centers of the two stars. x is the distance from the surface of star A. The variation of distance, variation with distance, of gravitational potential phi, so just bear in mind, usually gravitational potential is given the symbol of V. At Excel, AQA, OCRA, they use the symbol V. So gravitational potential phi, or V, at point P is shown in figure 1.2. So we see that the gravitational potential increases and then decreases. Question says, a rock of mass of 180 kilograms moves along the line, joining the centers of the two stars from star A towards star B. Use the data from figure 1.2 to calculate the change in kinetic energy of the rock when it moves from the point where x is 0.1 times 10 to the 12 to where it's 1.2 times 10 to the 12 and state whether this change is an increase or a decrease. So let's look at those distances first of all. So 0.1, 10 to the 12 and 1.2, 10 to the 12. That would be here. There's 0 0.1, 10 to the 12, which is there. That is at the surface of star A. And then 1.2 times 10 to the 12 is that point, which corresponds to the, surf the surface sorry, of star B. Okay, so 
To work out the change in kinetic energy, we want to work out what the change in gravitational potential energy is. If the GPE increases, the kinetic energy will decrease by the same amount, and vice versa. If the GPE decreases, the kinetic energy will increase by the same amount. So how do we work out if there is an increase or a decrease in gravitational potential energy? Well, change in potential energy is equal to the mass of the object that moves between two points in the field. That mass multiplied by the change in potential between those two points. So looking at the diagram, we're going from this point to this point. If we work out the change in potential, we multiply that by the mass of 180, which is what we're given in the question. That will give us the change in potential energy. So at 0.1 times 10 to the 12, the gravitational potential is 10. And at 1.2, the gravitational potential is minus 14. We're going from minus 10 to minus 14. Just to clarify, go back to the question. It says we're going from this distance to that distance. So when going from here to here, we're going from minus 10 to minus 14. To go from minus 10 to minus 14, the change in potential would be minus 4 times 10 to the 8. Always make sure to look at the units. So change in potential is minus 4 times 10 to the 8. That's your delta V. Units are joules per kilogram. The change in potential energy, so multiply this by mass, we end up with, so times that by 180, we end up with minus 7.2 times 10 to the 10 joules. So potential energy decreases. That means the kinetic energy will increase by the same amount. So there'll be an increase of 7.2 times 10 to the 10 joules. And just write down here that that will be an increase. And again, this is similar to if you were to, let's say, drop a mass from above the surface of the Earth towards the surface. As you drop that mass, potential energy will decrease, gravitational potential energy, and kinetic energy will increase. It's the same scenario here. And finally, part three. At a point where x is equal to 0.1 times 10 to the 12, so the same starting point as before, the speed of the rock is v. Determine the minimum speed, v, such that the rock reaches the point where x is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 12. So basically, the rock is being projected by some method from the surface of star a towards the surface of star b. We want to know what is the minimum speed that can achieve this, that can make this, the rock go from the surface of star a to the surface of star b. So some students, when they do this question, think about the kinetic energy from before, the 7.2 times 10 to the 12, the increase in kinetic energy, and then think, well, why do we need a speed? Why do we need a speed to get us from this surface of the star to this surface of that star if there is overall an increase in kinetic energy? Surely we're gaining kinetic energy. We don't need any kinetic energy to begin with. But we have to escape the gravitational field to an extent of a star A to get to a neutral point in between these two stars where the gravitational field of star B can then take over and pull it towards the surface of star B. So there will be a point in between these two stars where the gravitational field cancels out. After that point, star B's gravitational field takes over and it pulls it towards star B's surface. And this diagram of gravitational potential illustrates that quite well. The neutral point would be the peak of this graph around here, around 0.5-ish roughly. So in order to get from star A to star B, we have to get past this point here. This is the point of highest gravitational potential energy or potential. The rock has to get from this point where the gravitational potential is minus 10 to this point here. Once it passes that point, it will then start to fall down this gravitational potential hill. It will start to fall down towards star B. So to get from here to here, there's an increase in gravitational potential that consumes kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is used to go from here to here. And from this point, we then fall down. Gravitational potential will decrease, and therefore we will gain kinetic energy as we fall down towards the surface of star B. So what happens after this point is irrelevant. How far it falls down is irrelevant. To get from here to the surface of star B, we just have to have enough kinetic energy to get to this point here. So 
at this point here, the gravitational potential is minus 4.4 times 10 to the 8. At this point here, we know it's minus 10. So if I do that final gravitational potential minus the initial gravitational potential, that gives me 5.6 times 10 to the 8 joules per kilogram. This is the gain in gravitational potential needed to get to the top of that gravitational potential hill to the point where the gravitational fields of the two stars cancel out, where the rock will then fall down towards star B. So that's how much potential we need. If we times that by mass, so work done is equal to mass times change in potential, that's the same kind of equation as what we have here. Work done and, or rather, work done is a type of energy, so it makes sense why you can replace it with the change in potential energy. Work done results in that transfer of energy. So work done is equal to mass times change in potential. So if we then multiply this change in potential by the mass of 180, we end up with 1.008 times 10 to the 11. So again, that's multiplying 180, the mass of the rock, by this change in potential using this equation. That gives us the work done required to get to that neutral point, to the top of this gravitational potential hill. That's the kinetic energy we need to get us from star A to star B. And so we can then equate this to half mv squared, where half mv squared is half times 180 times v squared. So then these two things are equal. Divide this number here by the half times 180, and that gives us 1.12 times 10 to the 9. If we then square root this, we end up with 3.3 times 10 to the 4 meters per second, and that will be our final answer.